So in this section, we're going to cover what is captured in a log file, where the log files are stored, as well as some techniques just in a general sense, once again, for removing uh, files or log files from a system as the case may be. So what can be captured in a log file? That's really the question, is what, is what can be in that log file that's of interest to you? Well, the purpose of log files, simply put, are to record actions and activities on a system. Now, what it records can be very detailed within those guidelines. It really all depends on how the system owner has chosen to configure those things. But we can generally break the log files down into three high-level categories, system-wide log files, as well as service-specific and application-specific. The system-wide one would be things like events that are happening in the OS itself. Uh, then we have service-specific, which would be things like printing services, uh, Various networking services could be included in that category. And then we have application specific, which could be like web applications, DNS, DHCP, stuff like that. So those are just some broad categories that we have. And most operating systems will have at least a system wide and application specific. The service one can be rolled into the system one in some operating systems, but not always. So what can you expect to find in a log file. What type of actions can you expect to see in there? Well, you can expect to see things like reboots, both scheduled and unscheduled. You know, so if you start seeing a lot of, if you start seeing reboots in there, you need to ask yourself is when did that reboot happen? And is that, was that something that was scheduled to be done at that time? Or is it something that's happening outside of normal maintenance windows, in which case you might have an unstable system or you might have someone trying to tamper with things. Crashes of services and applications or the system itself, uh, security violations, memory access, application access, uh, permission usage or misuse of permissions. You can have deletions of files uh, showing up, you know, so people are deleting up to and including a log file on a system. You can actually have a log file pick that up and say someone tried to delete this log file or successful in deleting this log file and the log file shows up with a new timestamp or another log file shows up and says okay I caught that this other log file was deleted and then even system changes within reason. Now this is a short list uh, this list can actually be a lot longer or it could be shorter. Again, it really all depends on what the system owner has chosen to log. They have a lot of latitude in that. Uh, if they are very security conscious and very paranoid, as the case may be, they might decide to log a lot more than this. If they are someone that has a little more lax security policy environment, they might log less than this. It really all depends. So there's no ex set expectations here except the fact that you're going to have log files, just a question of how much is in there. Okay, so let's break down the log files a bit more into their various actions, just so you understand what's happening here. When we look at the application side of things, we just got to understand that what is stored in an application log file and which ones are present are going to vary based on what applications you have installed and just how aggressive those applications have been configured or are set up to log events on a system. As far as the system goes, the system, uh, you're going to see system level issues, which is anything relating to updates, rebooting, crashing, anything like that that happens to the operating system platform. Okay. Now, in some operating systems like Windows, they'll break that down a bit more. They can have system one for system events, and then they have a security one that's security stuff pertaining to the system. It really all depends. They're, the services one will vary once again depending on what that particular system has available and what the system owners chosen to install and configure log files for. Some operating systems are pretty diligent about logging, you know, things pertaining to services. Some a lot less though. Uh, if you go back in the Windows world, all you have to do is go back a, f a small number of releases to find a point in time where Microsoft didn't log everything pertaining to services. They've changed that but it's not something that they did forever and ever and ever. The log locations themselves are going to vary depending on what the OS is. So if you have a Windows system you've targeted, a Linux system, a different flavors of Linux, Unix, Mac OS, Android, iOS, any of those things, the locations of log files will be a little bit different. And someone could have customized to even move them 
outside of their default locations too. So there's no betting that it's absolutely 100% always going to be in the same location. Someone could have moved it for security reasons. Someone could have moved the log files. So any event that's being that hits the system is being put into a log file, which happens to reside on another physical system entirely. That is indeed done. So it really kind of all depends. The uh, logs they can be binary or plain text. If they're plain text, you can open them up and edit them with a simple text editor. If they're binary, you have to open with a specialized viewer. Most operating systems have a kind of a mix and match type approach to that. Tampering with log files can in of itself be detected. So picture a situation where you're removing or altering a log file to remove evidence that you did something and the act that you're of you removing or altering something in the log file itself was detected. Okay, so then the system owner may not be able to see what you did because you removed it, but they can tell you did something. So they could go out to a backup or look at other things to see if they can infer uh, what you did or recover what you deleted and see what you did. And then also remember, not all log files, just because they're present, mean they're going to be capturing everything. Some log files can be, well, in fact, just about any log file can be configured. So the logging process does not throw everything in a log file. Some may log a lot more, some may log a lot less. It really all depends on what that system's owner, uh, what their goals were. So in this presentation, we talked about log files just to kind of get you into the swim of things. I uh, talked about the purpose of log files, different types of log files that are present. Uh, the location or expected locations they could be, and then different formats like plain text and binary that text files can show up in.